I heard you crying out there. What's going on? Hey, look, I know, I know, it's your first night in the house and it's, <sighs> it's really daunting, right? It's really heavy, but I just, well, I really want you to know that it's, it's okay to remote in front of me. I know it's so hard to trust, so I don't expect you to do that, like, tonight or anything, but, <sighs> but hey, hey, look, you're angry, and I understand that, but what I will not tolerate is you cussing at me. Like I'm some jerk. Like I don't care about you. Okay, and you don't get to decide that I don't care about you yet. Right? You don't get to decide that. You can only know once you start witnessing my actions. But I promise you, my actions are going to show you that I'm here for you and I care. Like it or not, you're my son now. You walk through that door, and you're my son. Period. That's it. Now, if you spend some time here, and you realize that this isn't right for you, and you're not comfortable, and you want to go, I'm not going to stop you. But if you give it a little time, I think you'll see that you're very safe here, especially with me. I was betrayed left, right, front, back, and center as a child, constantly. There's really no deeper pain <laughs> than the betrayal of the people that you thought were really there to just look out for you. I know that pain very well. I'm extremely familiar with it. So anything y you feel like telling me is not going to shock me. And I hope that I convey that to you as sincerely as possible because it's real. like I know, I know intimately what adults are capable of doing to children and um, whatever they did, that wasn't caused by you. You, more than likely, had absolutely nothing to do with it. And that might be something that you won't really cling to or listen to right now. I know I didn't. There were a lot of adults in my life who would tell me that it wasn't my fault and I would think, how could it not be? I was right there the whole time. I let it happen. Well, I got them mad. I started it. If I just had been smarter. But the thing is, is that being a parent means that you have to um, teach the little beings in your house how to do everything, right? You weren't born able to know how to eat when the appropriate time was to sleep. You didn't know how to do anything on your own until somebody else taught you. And it, it unfortunately is the same basic principle when it comes to regulating your emotions, handling conflict, being honest, all of the nuances that come with being human and being an emotional being. Give me your hands. Just give, shut up. Just give them to me. 
You were not born bad. No. Look at me. I need you to look at me. I really, really hate making eye contact, but I need you to understand how serious I am about this. You were not born bad. You were not born a menace to society, a nuisance to your parents, a troublemaker. You weren't born that way. These hands that I'm holding, these hands are gentle and they won't hit like you've been hit, right? Say that with me. My hands are gentle. They will not hit like I've been hit. They will not hurt how I've been hurt. Because I am kinder than them. Because you are, I see it in you. Already, I see it in you. And people, people clued into that about me too. It's hard to want to believe anybody ever again when you've been betrayed the way that you've been betrayed. But all it takes is one person to give you some sort of hope. Okay, yeah, do you have your hands back? Sorry. And I, I want that to be this place. I wanna be that person. For you. I want to show you what it means to have somebody looking out for you. That's why I have this place with all these rooms and so many people. I know it's overwhelming, trust me. But we have ways of tackling overstimulation. We have ways of handling it and we have a specific designated quiet room that none of y'all are allowed to perpetrate in because it's sacred and it's a place to recharge and it's a place to get back out there and get your head in the game. Life is about community. I don't care if y'all stay with me till you're 40, whatever is going to work. This economy is a mess. I'm happy to have what I have and I'm happy that I get to share it with you because I wish more than anything I had had a place like this. This is what I always wanted. So I just want to, I want to share it with you. And in, in time, if, again, if you find, if you find that this isn't it for you, you don't, you don't think you're going to like it here. You know, that's fine to each their own. I'm not here to force you to do anything. <clears throat> but I really, I really want you to you know, I want you to weigh those pros and cons. I want you to weigh those pros and cons about what it means to ha to, to leave here. Because you, you really don't know what's out there. And it's really scary because I've been out there. I know, I know a little bit about what's out there. It's not, it's not great. It's not great. <sighs> but... Shut up. Just, just, just take it. Take one. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Ah. Do you just feel like disheveled, a little unsettled? No. Well, uh, I specifically put this blanket on your bed um, because it was made by one of my friend's moms and she is just lovely. She was so lovely when I knew her and I felt all the love that she had put into this for me and so usually on you know my kids first night I'll bring this in kind of leave it there. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. 
like I said, I'm not here to force you to do anything. <laughs> I, I just, I just want to try to make you as comfortable as possible. So there's this, if you want. I know I, this might seem corny to you. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm cringe, but I, so I have like a anxiety coin and it's a Pokemon. Okay. I don't know if, I don't know if you're super familiar with Pokemon cause I don't really know what the kids are into these days. They, Pokemon was huge when I was a child <laughs> and I got this like cool, like commemorative little coin guy of Psyduck and he just, you know, he's the anxiety Pokemon. And so I thought I like to keep him in my pocket. And when I feel overwhelmed, I just kind of, I rub the texture, you know, it's like got, it's got engraving on the back and see, and, um, and it's got a fun little holographic sticker on the front of Psyduck. And so I, I just keep it in my pocket. Right. And so I thought, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's cheesy, but if you want it, you can, I'm just going to, I'll put it, you know what? I'll set it right there on your notebook. You can use it if you want to. I just want you to know that as long as you're here, nothing is going to harm you while I'm around. Yes, Sweeney Todd is my favorite musical. How did you guess? <laughs> but really, I, that song really struck me the first time I heard it. Um, I, I don't think I'd ever heard anybody say that to me in my life when I first discovered that musical. And it's unhinged and chaotic and the music is fire, but... Um, it's my favorite because of that song. I love it. I love the sentiment of nothing's going to harm you while I'm around. I love that. I think that's so, oh, it's just so fierce and so, it's such a strong message to say to someone. And I believe we all deserve to hear that. Because again, you were not born bad. And even if you've done bad things, that doesn't mean that you can't repent. It doesn't mean you can never, like, you can, you can just go about your life and never do that again as well. Maybe you did that thing that one time, but you never did it again. You know, to a certain extent. I can only protect you so much before you have to go to jail. <laughs> Don't go to jail. Um, but also if you end up there, call me. I, I just... got your back. You're my son now, and I got your back. And I'm sure you still even now miss your parents. I miss my mom and she hated me. She hated me. The only reason she even liked having me around was because I was a handy little possession to parade around for people to look at. If she were still alive today, she certainly would not be proud of me. I'll tell you that. She would not like the person that stands, sits before you. <laughs> She'd probably call me disgusting. Some other bigoted, stupid stuff. But she's not here. <laughs> and I am, so. <laughs> Do with that what you will. If I can help it, I don't want you to feel alone. You're entitled to your privacy, of course, but there's a difference between needing time to yourself and feeling completely alone. And I just don't want that for you. I know what that feels like, that empty void that no one can pull you out of because the minute they see that you're in it, 
they just sign you off to your fate and they walk away. I'm not going to do that no matter how ugly the stories get. I'm not going to do that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to try to help you rewire those thoughts in your brain to make you believe in yourself and to make sure that you know that you can still be compassionate and level-headed and logical. You can be all of those things at the same time. You don't you don't have to be as explosive as they were to you. And sure, it may not be necessarily fair that they get to run around and break things and hurt people, and you don't, but do you really even want to do that? Or is it just that you have a lot of pent-up anger that you need to let out? You need to be mad about and feel. Processing your emotions is not going to kill you going to feel like it might, but it won't. I promise. I know because I did it. I know because I'm doing it. And I continue to do it while I try to help you regulate your emotions. I want to teach you how so that in the future, if you fall in love, if you have a best friend, or you get in a fight with your brother or sisters, that you'll be able to handle it. And you'll handle it with grace. Do you have any idea how many people are going to respect you because of that? So many more people are going to respect you because you've got calm, understanding hands over fists. People barely listen to the people that have their fists up all the time. They're just always trying to find a way to escape. I don't want people to be doing that for you. I don't want people to be trying to escape you. I don't want them to be captivated by you because I am. From what little I know about you, you seem like a really great guy. I want to I wanna help you embrace that guy. So you don't need to be your dad. You don't need to be anything like your mom. I'm nothing like my parents, and I'm proud of that. There's, no, there's nothing to be ashamed of to be nothing like your family. The blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Okay? Your chosen family will look out for you ten times harder. Because we know what it's like to grow up without that. We know how much it can heal. And how the lack of it can hurt. Okay. I brought you some water. And I want you to have a little before you go try to fall asleep. It's dust in your room. I gotta bring the vacuum in. Okay. You're doing better than you think. Thank you for being here. I'm sorry I intruded on you. I just, I got really worried. I won't tell anybody about this. But if you, if, if you want to talk to me, I, I want you to know I want to listen, okay? Genuinely, I want to listen to you. I want to know what's going on in that head, okay? All right. Sleep well, kiddo.